Ambassador Heyman, uh, good to see you. Thanks for good taking time out of a, of a hectic schedule to stop by today. Uh, what should we expect uh, by way of so-called deliverables uh, from the North American Leaders Summit, in particular how it, how it uh, relates to the Canada-U.S. relationship? What should we be watching for? Now? So you, you should watch for not only quality but also quantity. I have been working um, with counterparts here not only in Canada but on interagency basis mm -hmm. back in the United States. Every single week we have been having calls and interactions to sit down and parse through different deliverables that we can uh, come up with. The, I thought that the list would get narrower and I, we, it doesn't seem to be getting narrower right now. So the good news is there are a lot of broad areas which uh, um, you know, I'm hopeful we'll be able to cover, uh, both in terms of announcements and fact sheets and those types of things um, um, by summit day. Now, I'm going to give you a caveat. Sure. I worked uh, very closely uh, also on the state dinner and the outcomes for that, which we're incredibly proud of. Um, but the, literally standing in the White House just before the Prime Minister was going to pull up, we were still parsing through some of the language. And so uh, this is something that is probably going to get worked on uh, now that you have three parties as well, uh, all the way till. <laughs> Till all of them arrive. The I'm word seeing. is the word is to watch for uh, for progress on climate change and, and clean energy. I would say uh, that's an important factor for the United States and our two partners as well. Um, you know, after Paris and after the implementation of signing the agreement on April 22nd, Earth Day, uh, we're now in the hard part, and that's the implementation of actually okay. meeting these commitments. Um, we have. Uh, three partners that are coming together to try to identify ways in which we can further the goals and, um, and uh, hold some accountability in that file. President Obama will be uh, the first U.S. president to speak to the Canadian Parliament since President Clinton did it in 1995. Uh, why did the president feel it was important to accept that invitation and what should we expect him to talk about? Well, it's a unique opportunity to sit down and come and speak before the Parliament of one of your absolute best friends, your next door neighbor, your largest trading partner, your ally, someone you work with in NATO and, and in NORAD, and then obviously you share a 5,525 mile border. Um, what, a, what a fantastic opportunity. I think that when, when presented with that opportunity, I, do, I don't think there was any hesitation at all. This it was one of those things that you, you grab because it uh, provides a unique opportunity. In the embassy, Right. We have um, in the Coppola, on the top floor of the embassy, for those that have been there, um, are four presidents' quotes um, about the U.S.-Canada relationship, um, two Democrats and two Republicans. And I walk by those every single day on the way to my office. And I uh, constantly had envisioned, wouldn't it be great to have the president that I'm currently representing here as President Obama's personal representative to have President Obama speak uh, before Parliament. Some people have suggested, look, it's it's the last North American Leaders Summit. You have a, a president uh, who will have just a few months left in office. What can he really achieve? Uh, what's your answer to those people? I think you'll be surprised at what you can achieve. I mean, if you've just been looking at what he's been able to achieve with Iran, with Cuba, uh, what he's working on in climate change, and what he's working on in terms of uh, implementation, even working with things like Zika virus and trying to drive economic outcomes and the work on TPP. All of this is indicative of a person who is what he says, I'm going to run through the tape. I'm going to go as fast as I can, accomplish as much as I can, all the way until January 20th. Uh, this represents a, certainly a change in the dynamics for you as well. I, don't, I, I think everybody's pretty familiar in this country with the uh, and I think it's fair to describe it that way, a bit of the frosty treatment you, you receive from the past government. Maybe that's not how you would describe it as a diplomat, but uh, on issues over uh, the Keystone Pipeline and so on. Uh, what has changed in the relationship uh, with the change in government? I think there are two leaders right now that see the world through a similar lens. And so given that these two leaders see the world in a similar lens, we're able to accomplish a lot together. And so when you look at the world through the lens of multilateralism, when you look at the world through the lens of climate change and the risk to our planet, when you look at the world through the lens of helping those in need around the world, uh, uh, promoting freedom and democracy, protecting our allies and friends, we are so aligned right now. I think it makes it easy for the relationship to be good. But also these two, uh, these two men actually get along quite well. 
And so the, that, add that all together, uh, I will tell you, I believe the U.S.-Canada relationship is as good as maybe it's ever been. Uh, trade's a big focus for you, but I, but I think there's some uh, genuine concern in the land here about who comes next after Barack Obama. Right. Uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership sort of hangs in the balance. Uh, neither Donald Trump nor, well, Donald Trump's been, uh, some would describe it as hostile t towards trade, talked about ripping up the, the North American Free Trade Agreement. Hillary Clinton doesn't seem enamored uh, by the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Um, should we be worried about protectionism in the United States with whoever's next in the White House? Well, don't get caught up in political rhetoric right now. I, I will tell you that the trading relationship with Canada is of extraordinary importance to the United States. Two-thirds of the United States states, two-thirds of the states of the United States, their number one trading partner is Canada. And so you don't underestimate the importance uh, throughout the entire, not only the federal government, but at the local level uh, between corporations. We build things together. You know, our cars that we manufacture go across the border six, seven, eight times. Uh, or more in terms of that manufacturing process that goes on. Our supply chains are linked together. Um, we have 670-ish billion dollars worth of trade in goods and services. I'm not overly concerned about uh, where that's going. Uh, albeit the political re rhetoric that people are paying attention to uh, can be distracting. Um, but uh, I would say um, let's look at the long game. Um, I'm, co I'm confident in the U.S.-Canada relationship. Uh, I mean, I have to, I have to ask you, uh, how would the relationship change if Donald Trump's in the White House? I, I don't, look, I don't know how it's going to change for whoever's in the White House. But I will tell you that at the core, it doesn't matter who's in 24 Sussex or in the White House, the U.S.-Canada relationship rises above all of that. And we've had all kinds of different prime ministers and presidents in throughout our very, very long history together. And Canada-U.S. relationship still thrives, not only survives, but thrives through that process. And so people have asked me that uh, in terms of the last election in Canada. I will answer the exact same answer as it pertains to the U.S. side. But it does make a difference. I mean, uh, some would suggest, look, we, we you know, the relationship may have sputtered and, and lost some ground a little bit over the, uh, over the number of years of the Harper government when Mr. Obama has been in the White House that hasn't been that great of a relationship. So you can lose ground in the relationship. It's always helpful when leaders get along and see things through uh, similar lenses and they find paths to work together. Uh, but I've listened to the Prime Minister, we've talked together. I think he is a willing partner for whoever occupies the White House. All right, uh, U.S. Ambassador Bruce Heyman, uh, great to talk to you again. Good to talk Good to, to see you again. You. Good to see you.